Coming up tonight at 11, highlights from Union as the Dutchman look for the sweep of Dartmouth and a spot in the ECAC semifinals. We'll see you then. 20 years on these sidelines and 150 wins ranks Welch second all time at Ithaca. And after Saturday's milestone win, Welch got one of these, a game ball marked with the final score, 25-22. For Sports Final, I'm Phil Newman. It would have been even more packed, but it's tough to get games in around this time of year. Until Thursday, the softball team was 8-2, but hadn't played a game in any state other than Florida after having three doubleheaders postponed in the past. Swimming became a part of their relationship early on, and more than a decade later, Dewey was Zach's head swim coach at Lansing High School. So after entering the athletic training program in her sophomore year, Guzzo had to make a decision. Stick with tennis or lacrosse? Welcome back to Sports Final. Audra Baster, Phil Newman with you. Well, regardless of the sport, anytime Ithaca and Cortland are scheduled to play, the game seems to have a little more juice, a little more intensity to it. Wednesday, it was the Cortica Jug softball style. Good evening, everyone. I'm Phil Newman. Well, it's a new year, but the same matchup in the America East Tournament, UAlbany and Stony Brook. Two years ago, Stony Brook defeated Albany by two in the conference title game. And last year, it was Albany coming out on top on a last-second bucket in the semis. Today, the two met up once again with a trip to the NCAA tournament on the line. Stony Brook gets the America East title game at home, and the Seawolves used that home court advantage. They opened up the game on a 9-0 run, but UAlbany would respond with a 10-0 run of its own. DJ Evans went to work, scoring 12 of his 16 in the first half. UAlbany led by three at the break. Second half, back and forth we go. Sam Rowley with a reverse lay-in. Two of his team high, 18, but Stony Brook fires back. This time, a 10-0 run. Karsten Purifoy, bucket in the foul. Stony Brook goes up by six with 7.02 remaining, and Sam Rowley fouled out of the game. The Great Danes, though, they're not done. Trying to go dancing for the second straight year, and that's the senior, John Puck, with the turnaround jumper. And it was the sophomore, Peter Hooley, who would take over down the stretch. This three right here, with just under two minutes remaining, gave Albany a four-point lead and sealed the win for the Great Danes. 69-60 is the final. Hooley was named the MVP, and Albany is dancing yet again. To college hockey now, Union begins its postseason journey tonight with its sights set on becoming just the third team to win three straight ECAC tournaments. The Dutchman hosting Dartmouth in a best of three quarterfinal series. Third period, Union leads one to nothing. Daniel Carr on a breakaway, and he gets pulled down from behind. That sets up this. A penalty shot for Carr, and the senior knows what to do with it. Two to nothing, Dutchman. Carr adds an empty netter, and this game as Colin Stevens gets the shutout in his first career playoff start. Union takes game one, three to nothing. Now to high school basketball. Scotia, the number one team in the state in Class A, has made it all the way to the state semifinals undefeated. In uncharted waters now for this Tartans program. The state final four at Glens Falls Civic Center, Scotia and John Glenn. The Tartans come out on fire. Dom LaMorta with a kick out to Alex Sawsville for three. Part of a 23-5 run to open the game. Sawsville with 10 points, one of five Scotia players in double figures in Scotia. Always impressive the way they share it. Scott Sapura with a lob to Joe Cremo. A big game for Cremo, 27 points, eight boards, six assists. Scotia leads by 16 at the break, and it's all rolling in the second half. More great passing. Lamore to hit back-to-back -back threes to start the third quarter. 15 points for him, and the Tartans cruise in the Class 8 state championship game. Class AA semifinal, Green Tech also making its first Final Four appearance, taking on Brentwood. Second quarter, Jameel Hood Jr. to the hoop. He averages close to 17 points per game, but the senior was limited to just five points today. No worries for Green Tech, though. Najee Ward hits the long two. Ward leads all scores with 15 points. Green Tech up by four at the half. Fourth quarter now. Ramion Burt with a pretty move on the baseline to give Green Tech some breathing room. Eagles up by seven, and they'll get their first shot at a state title after the 52-44 win. A couple of local girls basketball teams in action today as well, and both Section 2 teams advance to the state championship games tomorrow. Lauren Madigan led Hoosick Valley with 18 points, and Alex Godfrey went a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven at the foul line to help Ford Edward into the Class D title game. Coming up tonight at 11, highlights from Union as the Dutchman look for the sweep of Dartmouth, 
and a spot in the ECAC semifinals. We'll see you then. As a three-year starter at attack for the Ithaca women's lacrosse team, senior Becky Guzzo is no stranger to dishing out assists. But Guzzo also has another love, tennis. So when I was around three years old, I think I just kind of jumped into a lesson and I never stopped playing after that. After seeing her play on campus one day, Guzzo was asked to join the tennis team by the coaching staff. Two years later, Guzzo had a pair of Empire 8 championships and an NCAA appearance under her belt. But her schedule was filling up. I decided to do athletic training my sophomore year. As a program, we're lucky um, they even give us the opportunity to play athletics because a lot of uh, schools don't with athletic training because you need all that ex experience with sports teams themselves. So after entering the athletic training program in her sophomore year, Guzzo had to make a decision. Stick with tennis? or lacrosse. I had already accomplished a lot with tennis and I didn't have that feeling yet with lacrosse. I felt like there was still more to accomplish and more I wanted to help my team get to. The decision to stick with lacrosse has been a good one for Guzzo. She led the team in assists last season and is doing so again this year with 11 assists in seven games. She's pretty smart about um, the chances she takes and you know I think she's courageous about feeding stuff in there when she has the opportunity and you know, she also has good people finishing at the end. I love that feeling when I get when I get an assist, when I'm able to make something happen on the field, I just get goosebumps. Like, it's such a good feeling. And Guzzo hopes to continue that feeling as the Bombers look for their third win in a row on Tuesday against Union. For Sports Final, I'm Phil Newman. <laughs> Wednesday was business as usual for the Bombers with a 20-4 win over Utica. But the story of the day was John Janiskevich. The freshman scored a career-high six goals and tied senior Pat Slaughta for the team lead with 30 this season. Yeah, I think uh, you know he doesn't play like a freshman. I guess it's the key. He's a kid that kind of stepped right in. He's very composed. He's uh, very mature for his, for his age. Um, I think I've gotten a lot of help from the upperclassmen. I'm, I'm just really getting the right spots, the right times, and the upperclassmen are seeing me and just giving me the ball. I'm lucky enough to finish it. Janiskevich had a hand in two of the three goals Ithaca scored in the final 38 seconds of the first half and helped the Bombers force 26 Utica turnovers. We, we went in with a little different composure today, put a little more pressure in from the, almost like a full court press in basketball, but for lacrosse. Um, and I, I think that adds to us playing at a faster pace. So we're going to keep trying to push that pace and, and, and pressure from as soon as they, you know, their end of the field all the way to our end of the field. Now the 12th ranked Bombers will try and keep that pressure on and stay unbeaten in the conference with their final four games coming against Empire 8 opponents. Yeah, our biggest challenge right now is putting a full 60 minutes together. I don't even think we did that today. I think we you know, had a little lull after halftime. And, and, and that's hurt. If you look at our stats, I think you look at every third quarter, we haven't really showed real well in the third quarter. And so our big challenge is, you know, first putting two really good practices together tomorrow and Friday, and then Saturday putting a full 60 minutes together. So if the Bombers have yet to put together a full 60 minutes, it could be a scary thing for the rest of the Empire 8 once they finally do. Nazareth is next here on Saturday. For Sports Final, I'm Phil Newman.